Hello and welcome to another video review from AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton and I've been the editor since 2003. I'm also a fully trained and qualified THX and ISF professional calibrator with 18 years of experience. In today's video we have our review of the Panasonic JZ2000 OLED TV. Before we talk about the performance of the Panasonic, if you like our reviews and want to see more of them while supporting our channel, then please like and subscribe. And don't forget to click the notification bell to be informed every time we upload new video content. You can also find a link to our Patreon in the video description. And also don't forget to check out the TV forums at Europe's largest AV community on AV forums to see what owners of this TV think about it after normal use in their own homes. We publish our in-depth TV reviews, which include measurements and calibration results first on AV forums, usually a while before our YouTube videos. So make sure you head over to check them out as they contain even more in-depth calibration details and testing. We reviewed the Panasonic JZ2000 in November 2021. This is Panasonic's flagship TV for 2021 and features the custom Pro OLED panel with extra brightness and heatsink, as well as the full Dolby Atmos built-in soundbar and upward firing speakers tuned by Technix. Following on from the GZ and HZ2000 models, the JZ adds in HDMI 2.1 ports with full resolution 4K 120 playback as well as Dolby Vision VRR variable refresh rate at 60Hz. Panasonic, like Philips this year, has made advances with the gaming side of its TVs for 2021 with better support for the latest gaming standards with 4K 120 HFR, that's high frame rate, AMD FreeSync Premium support, EARC, automatic low latency mode or ALLM, as well as a decent input lag of 14 milliseconds, which is the same result as the JZ1500, which shares the same panel, but it drops the Dolby Atmos soundbar and upward firing speakers. The JZ2000 follows the creator's intent as it is a Hollywood tuned TV, adding in the filmmaker mode for accurate out of the box SDR and HDR picture quality. This is a one button press picture preset that aligns the TV with the D65 white point, Rec 709 color and of course BT1886 for gamma. There is also support for HDR10, HDR10 Plus Adaptive, Dolby Vision, Dolby Vision IQ and Hybrid Log Gamma or HLG, High Dynamic Range Support. While the JZ1500 is the choice for those who don't need the Dolby Atmos sound system and who just want the custom professional panel, the Panasonic JZ2000 remains the flagship model offering all the options. There are a few niggles with the performance and it is a very slight step back compared to the HZ2000 from last year. And if you don't need HDMI 2.1, you could seek one of those out. But the overall performance and the new gaming features still make the JZ2000 a compelling purchase. If you want the best SDR and HDR cinematic images available on a 2021 OLED TV, along with strong gaming features and the soundbar and upward firing speakers, the JZ2000 comes highly recommended. Looking at the grayscale results, we can see that filmmaker mode is yet again incredibly accurate out of the box, with Delta E errors around 1, which is well below the visible threshold of 3, meaning that there are no visible issues within TV and film content that we viewed in the filmmaker mode. Gamma is also tracking well to the BT1886 standard, with just a slight darkening at the 10% brightness, but this is not visible in most dark content and shadow details are still strong and visible. The Rec 709 colour gamut results are a little bit more disappointing with some hue errors in magenta and yellow with a slight undersaturation of the red saturation points. Our Delta E errors average at 1.4 which is well below the visible threshold of 3 and we couldn't see any of the obvious errors while we were viewing TV and film content. However, it would be good if Panasonic were a little bit more accurate here. Looking at the grayscale, you can see that we have achieved reference level results with a Delta E error average of just 0.4, which is obviously well below the visible threshold of 3. Gamma tracking is also very accurate to the BT1886 standard, with no visible errors seen with any film or TV content that we viewed. The Rec 709 HDR color gamut is also reference level, with excellent saturation tracking at all points within the graph. 
Once again, Panasonic shows how it can be done with their image accuracy once calibrated. Panasonic JZ2000 uses the custom professional OLED panel with heatsink which produces a high peak and full screen brightness. This is a development of work from the Panasonic engineers and it's the third example of this panel type we've seen from the company. It is similar to this year's LG G1 and Philips OLED Plus 936 as well as the Sony 890J panels in using the heat dissipation layer but with a few Panasonic only tweaks to keep it slightly brighter than the rest. We measured the JZ2000 over various window sizes with a peak brightness of 877 nits on the industry standard 10% window with 147 nits on a full field brightness on a 100% window. This is identical to the JZ1500 result and is very impressive for an OLED panel. Only the Sony A90J manages to push the 100% window brightness slightly higher than the JZ2000, but the overall tone mapping and relaxed automatic brightness limiter or ABL circuit provide the JZ2000 with the edge when it comes to HDR performance. We have two different tone maps employed by the Panasonic depending on the mastered metadata for 1000, 4000 or 10,000 nit content. With 1000 nit content, the tracking is accurate until the peak brightness where there is a hard clip. The map for 4000 nits or higher varies in that it follows the standards but then gradually rolls off towards a clip point, so it retains all the highlight details within the content. The JZ2000 only applies these tone maps when the dynamic HDR effect is switched off within the menus. The DCI-P3 colour gamut results are good with only a slight hue error in magenta and the gamut is not quite wide enough to achieve 100% coverage. None of the errors within the colour gamut chart are seen with actual HDR10 film content, providing an excellent accurate viewing mode. We measured BT2020 at 72% XY and 78% UV with P3 coming in at 96% XY and 99% UV. We are reviewing the 55 inch version of the JZ2000 and as it shares the same panel as the 65 inch set, we would expect the picture quality to be very close between sizes. Once again, panel uniformity is excellent on the Panasonic with no obvious signs of dirty screen effect or banding with solid backgrounds and panning movements. We also have no issues with any colour shifts or tinting when viewing off axes. On a 5% brightness field, we can see some very light banding to the panel, but this is not seen with normal viewing content, even with dark scenes viewed in a dark room. Video processing is also very good with the HCX Pro AI processor, producing an excellent upscaled image for HD to 4K content with no issues at all. Even SD content looks decent from a good source like DVD with no junk pixels or added edge enhancement. Motion from 24 frames per second is excellent without any induced judder and it also has the correct 5.5 pull down applied. There are also no issues with frame skipping even when using the intelligent frame creation processing and interpolation. And of course this is a big step forward for Panasonic as the frame skip issue that's been around for a number of years now when using IFC is no longer there and 50Hz broadcast content also looks good with no visible issues from the mix cuts or fast moving content. You can of course experiment with IFC, especially with video based content and sports, however be aware that with more interpolation you are more likely to add in artifacts and false edges to fast moving objects. If you're a film fan who watches movies in the dark and wants to see content exactly as it was mastered and intended to be seen, then nobody does this better than Panasonic in my opinion. Now, let's set some expectations here. We're talking about very fine margins, especially once calibrated correctly, but for me, the JZ1500 and JZ2000 are still the class leaders when it comes to the cinematic images in SDR and HDR. Color reproduction is always accurate on a Panasonic, even when directly out of the box in filmmaker mode. This has been the case for a number of years now, and while Sony is pushing in the right direction with the A90J and its excellent performance attributes, for me, the Panasonic still edges it. It is, however, incredibly close. 
There's no getting away from the fact that LG, Philips and Sony are pushing the Evo panel performance this year to try and match the lead Panasonic has had for a number of years now. But when it comes to HDR, the JZ2000 and of course the JZ1500 are still the best performing OLED panels in my opinion. In filmmaker HDR mode, the accuracy is fantastic with extremely accurate cinematic images with superb just above black retrieval and stunning highlight details. Colours are yet again sublime and overall, the JZ2000 edges the competition for the ultimate cinematic image in my opinion, having tested all the contenders in great detail this year. All four OLED TVs are superb and once again I have to manage expectations here, we're talking about very small differences. The JZ2000 obviously has the tuned by Technics Dolby Atmos soundbar and upward firing speakers to add cinematic performance to its images. Sound quality is good with a nice wide sound stage and the height channels do produce a wider and more immersive sound field. However, with the lack of actual speakers behind the listener, the sound is very much front heavy in that regard. Adding an external subwoofer does tighten up the bottom end and the ability to punch in your desired crossover adds to the flexibility. Whether the sound quality is worth the uptick in asking price over the JZ1500 will be down to your needs and only you will be able to answer that question, but the performance is strong if you need such a sound solution. The JZ2000 follows the design cues of the last two models with an identical design to the chassis with the addition of this year's round swivel stand. I've already made my feelings known regarding the stand in the JZ1500 review and can confirm it hasn't changed since I reviewed that particular TV a few weeks ago. I just don't feel it matches the design language and the price level of the JZ2000 but of course design is subjective and some users will no doubt love it. The screen is minimalist in design with a large soundbar attached to the bottom of the panel and the same dark coloured finish as the rest of the panel so it blends neatly together. There is a Panasonic logo situated in the middle of the soundbar while the rest of the finish is sleek and expensive looking. The upper firing speakers are attached to the top centre of the screen with a tuned by Technics logo in the top right hand side of the grille. Around the back we have the connections. The connections on the JZ2000 are sideways and downwards facing with a good assortment available. Sideways we have a CI slot, a 3.5mm headphone or subwoofer jack, two USB 2.0 slots and one HDMI 2.0B port and downwards we have an RF and two satellite antennas, one HDMI 2.0B port and two HDMI 2.1 ports. There's also a legacy AV connector, an ethernet port and a digital audio output. One slight disappointment is the remote control provided with this flagship TV which feels a little bit too plastic and cheap considering the price point. I would love to have seen a silver metal faced remote with a backlight but instead we get a silver plastic which is identical to the JZ1500. The layout of the remote is intuitive and with good ergonomics while it also sits neatly in the hand and it is comfortable to hold. It's just a shame it's not quite to the build quality for a flagship TV but it's perfectly serviceable in use. To find out more about the Panasonic JZ2000 head over to avforums.com where you can read the full in-depth review or you can follow the link in the description. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.